Hello, and welcome to the WinSQL online tutorial from Cinemetrics Technologies. In a few minutes, I will be discussing some of the basic features in WinSQL. Particularly, we will be discussing how to use the query window, running SQL queries by creating new scripts and opening existing script files, and submitting multiple queries and fetching the results. So now let's get started and connect to a live database. In this example, I am going to connect to a MySQL database. When I first start WinSQL, it displays this connection window, which contains the list of available data sources. These are the names of all registered data sources on my machine. Each data source points to a different database. This tutorial assumes that you already know how to create a data source for your desired backend database. If you are not familiar with creating data sources, there are several tutorials on our website that talk about this step. To connect to MySQL, I simply provide a user ID password, and select an appropriate database type from this pick list. Selecting a database type specifies the type of plugin I wish to use in WinSQL. Every transaction will be committed automatically when this box is checked. Otherwise, I must either commit or roll back every SQL statement manually. We recommend you leave these two boxes checked as they speed up catalog lookups. Finally, click OK to connect. After connecting to the database, I can either write new queries or load a pre-existing script. There are multiple ways to load existing scripts. I could click Open File an Existing Connection from the menu, click the Open SQL Script button, drag a file from the Windows Explorer into the query window, or my favorite, click the desired file from the Explorer tab on the far right hand side. To run queries, I can either click the Execute button without anything highlighted, or I can select a part of the script to run only the selected part. Notice the presence of the word Go here. This word is used as a query terminator in WinSQL, and it separates one query from another. At runtime, WinSQL sends multiple chunks of this script to the database where each chunk is delimited by this query terminator. In this example, WinSQL will break the script into three parts and send each part separately. When the results come back, I see multiple tabs, each displaying the results of a query. Notice some of the columns have different colors. Red indicates a primary key, while blue indicates a foreign key. By clicking the plus sign next to the cell, I can bring up the associated data. For example, if I click on a particular customer ID, WinSQL will automatically pull the customer record with the matching ID number. I can also double-click a row to bring up the update wizard, allowing me to change data. This wizard is a convenient way of modifying any existing data. It displays the existing values and allows me to type the new value right next to it. As I type the new value in, WinSQL generates the necessary update statement required to make the change. Notice the second results tab is not editable. This is because the query that generated this result came from multiple tables using a join statement. Whenever I have a join, the result set becomes read only. Besides displaying the results in a grid control, I also have the choice of displaying the results in a text or in a form-like window. If I display the results in text, it cannot be edited. Displaying the results in text is convenient if you're displaying large textual fields. I can also display the results in a form-like window. Editing a result in a form is very easy. I can simply start typing my new values and move on to the next record. Pressing the Escape key aborts any changes. Keep in mind that only certain result sets are editable. For example, the results are not editable if they are generated from stored procedure or using a joint statement. As I work with more scripts, I may run out of room in this query window. To avoid cluttering, WinSQL offers a feature called Query Pages. To create a new query page, simply click on the New Query Page button. Notice that I have now created another query page listed in the Available Query Pages combo box. It is often helpful to have a more descriptive name. To do that, I use a special comment in WinSQL. Special comments are a handful of predefined strings that do different things. 
I suggest Googling WinSQL special comments to get a page on our website that lists all of them. The descriptive name now appears in the available query pages box. The history tab displays a list of queries I ran previously. Latest queries appear at the top. I see different options when I click the right mouse button. I could optionally specify a filter string to limit the number of queries I see here. The status bar, as seen at the bottom, contains several sections and display information that is often very helpful. On the far left, it displays the cursor information, followed by the DSN name and the type of RDBMS you're connecting to. This green light indicates the auto commit mode. It turns red when you run queries in manual commit mode. Next I see another indicator which is meant to display the status for the catalog cache. This will either display a C in green indicating that the catalog has been cached, a D in gray indicating that the catalog caching is disabled, or an A in blue indicating catalog is being fetched. The next section displays the current file name which will turn red if the file is modified. Next to that is a status bar showing the status of running queries. And finally, the last section displays useful information about the queries you run. For example, after running a bunch of queries, it will display the execution time. This concludes the online tutorial showing some of the basic features of WinSQL. I highly recommend that you spend a moment and take a look at some of the other tutorials on our website that talk about some of the advanced features like importing and exporting data, as well as generating test data for your development environment. Thanks for watching, and have a nice day.